Sorry about that. Um, the doorbell just rang, so I had to deal with that. Um, so, right, we have the luminosity, we have the temperature, and we want the area. Okay, so we want an equation that's got all those factors in it. Okay, and we're fully aware the equation has all those factors in is that the luminosity is equal to uh, sigma, which is the different bottom constant, t to the 4, so it's temperature to the 4 times by 8. Okay, and as soon as you've done that, um, you can uh, figure out your value of A. Pretty straightforward from there. So you just put your values in, it allows you to figure out your A. I rearrange for A and then figure it out. Next thing it says, hence calculate a diameter. Okay, so essentially for that, all you need to do then is put in your, um, put in essentially the idea uh, that A is going to be equal to uh, 4 pi r squared. Okay, as soon as you put in that, okay, again, just use your value of A from the previous question and put that across. So these two questions, I won't go through in any more detail than that. You've got the process, just rearrange an equation, you can check against the answers and the marks. 30. Doppler effect. Um, so in 2003, astronomers announced the discovery of a planet orbiting a star 90 light years from Earth. Astronomers use Doppler effect to detect a planet. You may have heard of Doppler effect when an ambulance uses its star and going past you. Describe what you'd hear as an ambulance approaches and passes. Okay? So as it approaches, the frequency will be higher, the wavelength is shorter. Okay, so if the frequency is higher, that's going to be a higher pitch. As it goes away from you, the frequency is lower than normal, so again, that's a lower pitch. Um, at the moment of passing, the frequency you actually observe is that of the frequency of the sign. Okay, so there's, there's three potential points for that. This method can be used by uh, astronomers called a Doppler wobble effect. When a planet orbits a star, it pulls on the star, making it move a slightly a wobble. The larger, the larger the planet, the more the star wobbles. Explain the use of the Doppler technique to discover um, uh, the new planet, including um, diagrams of the planet and the star when the wobble effect is useful. Label your diagram, show the direction of Earth. Di di direction of the Earth. Okay? So, your diagram has to have the planet, the star, and the Earth all in line with each other. It's not going to work, okay, unless all of these are in line with each other. What's going to happen is the planet is going to rotate. Oh, sorry, there's none of this is showing under the web. Let me just uh, lift and move it across so you can see what I've got. There you go. So what's going to happen? Is uh, so let me get in the right spot. There we go. Okay, what's going to happen is the planet is going to. This is the planet. This is the star, and this is Earth. The planet will go around the star. But by doing that, it'll make the star go one way when it's on one side, and it'll go the other way as it's on the other side. By doing that, it's going to make the star move quickly. Um, in this in this circular motion as well, but it's going to be either going away or towards um, the Earth. So if the planet's going this way round, okay, the star will move like so, sort of like orbit around a spot as well. It'll be pulled towards this planet, which has a high mass and therefore high gravitational pull. So the planet will be receding. Um, and moving towards the Earth. So we're going away from the Earth and then back towards the Earth. That's caused by the fact that the planet is attracting the star towards it. So the star is experiencing this change in velocity. And remember whenever there's a change in velocity there'll be a change in frequency. Um, so there'll be a maximum frequency um, change uh, when it's nearest the Earth. Uh, and that will cause a blue shift. It'll be a maximum frequency change when it's going away, um, and that's when it's um, furthest away from the Earth. Uh, red shift will be going away. Um, so, red shift when it's going this way, maximum when it's at the top. Um, blue shift when it's going this way, maximum when it's at the bottom. That's the idea you've essentially got to discuss. The astronomer discovered that the time for a planet to make one orbit around its star was six years. How did they determine this from observations? Well, they've got uh, 
look at how long it's taking for a planet to return to the same position um, in its orbit. Or look how long it takes to get from one side to the other. Okay, so if it started here, how long does it take to get around to there? Half the orbit. Or if it started there, how long does it take to return to that point? That's how you determine um, how long an orbit is. Use a gravitational force um, equation to explain why the method astronomers use to discover this planet will not uh, reveal any planets the size of Earth. Okay, so the equation that we generally uh, use, let's find a spot on this paper. Whenever they talk about gravitational forces, okay, is G, a uh, big M, little m over R squared. Big G, um, big M, little m over R squared, or M1, M2 over R squared. That's the equation we generally use. Don't um, confuse this and write G here. I've just written, uh, read a bit of my notes and I've just written that some people often uh, confuse, uh, write G in there um, in terms of different equation. So for the, for the Earth, this is going to be really small. So it's going to be very small. Um, not just small, but very small. So the force that it actually produces, uh, because these are directly proportional, um, will be small which means the change in velocity won't be so great, which means there won't be a change in frequency. And that's pretty much it in terms of those four marks. One for the equation, one for saying m is small, therefore f is small for the earth. Um, there's three marks there. And then you've got to say this is going to only lead to a small change in velocity or a small Doppler shift for that fourth mark. Okay, question 31. So we've got a HR diagram. And on this uh, HR diagram, um, they've left the two axes blank, okay? To add labels and units to each axis, okay? So it should be um, L and T for your units. Let me just turn. It should be L and T, luminosity of the sun. And Kelvin for your units, so L and T for your labels. Um, L with the little luminosity of the sun and K for your units. Um, I think it's just two more question. Yeah, that's it. Complete the scale on the Y axis, adding three further values uh, where indicated. Okay, so we've got to get um, the right values in place showing the correct scale. So we've got three slots, so that must be 10 to the minus 2. That must be 10 to the 0. And that must be 10 to the 2, okay, to, to ensure that we follow a linear scale. Complete scale for the x-axis. Okay, so we must remember that it pretty much halves every time um, from the previous value. So if that's 40,000, that's going to be 20,000. And if that's 10,000, that's going to be 5,000. You can see how that follows that pattern throughout. Um, letters A, B, C, and C, D, and E represent different stars. Identify all stars which could be a red giant. Okay, so red giant is definitely C and, and maybe B. So red giants are generally on this part of the graph in terms of luminosity and temperature. Okay, so this part of the graph is where you normally find your red giants. So, so C, B is just on the edge of that. C is a definite, but B is just on the edge of that. Um, a low mass star on the main sequence. Here's our main sequence. Okay. So, a low mass star is going to be E. Okay, it's got, it's got a very low temperature. Okay, so that'll be a low mass. Very low temperature, meaning low mass. And very low luminosity. So E would be the one for... Um, for uh, IV. Use the data below to show the luminosity of star um, tau is approximately 4 times 10 to 30. So I'm just going to check to see in the question. I'll probably skip over a bit where we've been given some information on it. I think it's on the graph. We just can't see it clearly on my version. Let's have a look. I 
think I've deleted it from my... Oh, no, hold on, we've got the... Silly me, we've got the uh, information for it down here. Okay, so uh, use data below to show it. So I was thinking about the graph, where it said use the data below. For some reason, I thought the graph. So we've got the information here. We've got intensity, we've got distance. Okay, um, and they want us to show the luminosity. Okay, so um, straightforward. The equation we're going to use is um, uh, luminosity, uh, the one for luminosity, intensity, and area. Remember, the area is 4 pi d. Okay, so replace uh, a with 4 pi d essentially, seeing that with L is equal to um, area times um, intensity, um, yeah, area times intensity. So luminosity is equal to area times intensity. You rearrange that, sorry, you substitute this in for that. So you end up with luminosity is equal to 4 pi d, doesn't need to, be, doesn't matter if it's a big deal, let's do really, uh, squared. So you end up with that, <coughs> and then you put your values through there, and that then tells you your luminosity. One of the labeled stars in the Hertz model diagram is this, is, is tau. Calculate the luminosity of tau in terms of solar luminosities and thus deduce which letter this star must be. Luminous, luminosity of the sun is that. Okay, so we've got our value of luminosity. We need to divide, so from the previous question, we divide it by this. Okay, and once you figure out what that value is, um, you look at the um, stars on the graph to figure out which it is. Um, you should um, figure out I'm just looking at my notes that it's, that it's going to be a okay it's going to be a because uh, well the answer i got was about nine thousand seven hundred so that's um nearly ten thousand so that's going to be a up here okay in terms of luminosity for this axis right that brings us to the end of um astrophysics um so remember to look back through the other videos if you struggled with any of the isp tasks thank you very much for watching